All right, everyone. Hello, hello. And now for this month's spice of the month, given that we are smack dab in the middle of airy season, I figure there's no better spice to talk about than coriander. Or, if we're talking about the leaf, cilantro. So cilantro or coriander is one of those funny things where people either really like it or they really, really don't. And I know that there's something to do with the gene about this, that some folks have a certain gene that just makes it taste like soap to them. For me, luckily, I don't have that gene and I very much enjoy cilantro when it comes to things like, say, you know, um, chutneys at my favorite Indian restaurant. They have like that chickpea onion kind of chutney with the cilantro. It's so good. Or when it comes to guacamole or any like kind of tacos, burritos, salsa, anything like that. It is such a fresh pop of flavor. And when we get to the ground coriander, which is referring to coriander seed, we also get something that's very earthy, very pungent. Yep, and it has almost like, not a peppery smell, but it, it kind of reminds me of mustard in a way. It's something that you could see living in sweet things as well as savory things, which is like really strange, but it smells really nice, which is why I don't understand why ancient people didn't really seem to like it, at least not the smell. But today we will be getting all into that, just briefly overview of coriander, so come along with me. So history-wise, coriander goes way back. I mean, they were finding coriander in the actual tomb of King Tutankhamun, all the way in Egypt. It's been around for at least since 5000 BC. Bilok really likes flirting with these bottles, so he's gonna keep trying to... But so coriander, or cilantro as the leaf is called, is actually native to around the Syria, Egypt, just Levantine area. You'll notice that coriander seeds were actually mentioned twice in the Bible, in Exodus specifically. In the Bible, coriander seeds are used to compare what the manna that falls from the sky is. So when all that bread is falling from the sky that the Israelites pick up to eat after they have fled Egypt, um, they compare it to white flakes, white like coriander seed, right? So. This has been around for that long, at least as long as the Exodus story has been told. However, coriander comes from Greek chorus, which uh, just means like a, a stink bug, some kind of very stinky little bug. And again, I don't know why, because this stuff doesn't smell bad at all. Maybe it smells different when it's on the plant. Maybe that's the thing, like in the plant itself, the fresh seeds maybe, but the dried ground stuff to me smells really, really good. Nonetheless, they did think that because it was so stinky, so pungent and also kind of bitter, that it would be less good for food and more good for medicine. So for a long time, that's what people were using coriander as, as a medicinal plant. But of course, we know the Roman Empire stretched very far in how much territory it conquered, and that includes the area that this is native to, Syria, Egypt, all this kind of stuff. They were all over the place, whether trading, whether conquering, all that kind of stuff, they had that on lock. And so naturally, as Rome pushed upwards in Europe, this was going to follow. And that is how this got up into Europe as well and where it started to be used for things like sausages and other kinds of food. And they even thought at one point that it was an aphrodisiac, which is interesting. Now, as you can see from the history, all of those little tidbits lead into all of the other things I'm gonna talk about. The medicinal, the culinary, and the magical uses of this plant. Medicinally, this plant has thought to be used for all kinds of different things. I mean, way back in the day, People were eating it to treat things like parasites and worms and all these other kinds of things, also for like anxiety and other stuff, which there's not a lot of studies to prove that for. Like there's not really a lot of research that that really does much there. However, the seeds themselves, they do have quite a bit of vitamins in there, really good stuff. I'm talking like vitamin C, calcium, magnesium, potassium, all these kinds of vitamins and minerals that are really good for you. A lot of them show up in the coriander seed. It also might have some diuretic effects and actually help with blood pressure by uh, dilating blood vessels. So again, it's not the same as if you got any like real medication for it, therefore go to your doctor, get medication if you have a serious issue. But when we talk about the concept of food as medicine, this is what we're talking about, right? These things like coriander that you just kind of sprinkle into your food on a regular basis, when you eat them regularly, they might work really well as preventative medicine. A lot of the food we eat actually works as preventative medicine in that way. I mean, for example, if this has a lot of vitamin C in it, right, then you're gonna be pretty safe from scurvy, which is what happens when you have a serious deficiency in vitamin C. Some people end up getting scurvy because their diets literally never have a single fresh fruit or vegetable in them. 
And like, whatever the reason for that may be, the fact of the matter is, it still hurts your body if you don't get any good fresh fruit, fresh uh, vegetable, or any herbs and spices. These things are preventative medicine. They're not things that'll like cure you of cancer, but they will absolutely keep you generally a little better off on your day to day when you just put them in your food, right? When you make them into soups and curries and everything else that we're gonna talk about. Some say it also might be a carminative, which means it's a gas buster. So things that are also carminative, like that my mom told me to use are things like caraway seeds, which is interesting because actually parsley, cilantro, all these things are all part of the carrot family. And that includes dill, caraway, and other things like that, which is interesting. They all kind of have this effect to them. So would I use this as like a wholesale medicine? No, but does putting it in your food help with like base nutrition and maybe also with a little bit of like digestion? Sure, probably. Not so much that you would just eschew modern medicine for it, but definitely enough that it'll give you a little bit of a boost on a day to day because it's like every other herb and spice you're gonna put in your food. It's got a lot of the things that your body needs. They're called nutrient dense because even though you're not really getting any calories out of herbs and spices, you are getting a lot of the vitamins and minerals that you need to survive and be healthy on a day to day. Pair them with all your fruits, vegetables, meats, starches and everything else and you are solid you know what i mean to which i might point out that the culinary uses of coriander are pretty wide ranging i mean again as i said before people would use them in sausages and they still do they'll still put that coriander in a sausage uh, spice mix for like the meat that goes into them they will also use them to spice wine there are a lot of really interesting herbs and spices that can make wine just come to another level, right, of flavor with all that kind of mold spices. I mean, think of any sangria or any kind of mold wine, right? Mold wine, especially in those colder months when you are kind of simmering it together with star anise and cinnamon sticks and cloves, it just imparts more good nutrition into that wine. Wine itself already having a lot of good things like tannins and everything else. So of course the seed of coriander or cilantro, the seeds themselves, can go into some kind of steeped or spiced wine mix. Likewise, if you have that ground seed, you might be putting this in soups, curries, or other sauces to give it that really kind of pungent, spicy, earthy kick. It's not like spicy hot wise, but it's got that kind of, that kind of zest to it, if you know what I mean. Some say you could even just have coriander seeds as a snack, right? Roast them in a pan for a few minutes and just eat them like you would like a chickpea snack or something. However, I will say that some of my favorite uses of coriander as a plant do come from the leaf. As I was talking about, that chickpea onion chutney that I get at my favorite Indian restaurant is so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's hearty. It's flavorful. It feels and tastes so fresh. It's just good. You know what I mean? So anything that's kind of like a salsa or a chutney, Cilantro absolutely will make it pop and it pairs really well with things like hot peppers or other kinds of spice. Which is why you're also gonna find it in things like salsa and things like guacamole. Especially when you have something heavy and fatty like guacamole, something like cilantro, when you get that bite of that leaf, it just adds such a pop of freshness that you you just you just can't ignore it. It kind of reminds me of the parsley I had in my stuffed shells recipe. You could taste the freshness of it in the filling, even though it had been baked in all this cheese and red sauce and everything else. And of course, right, just like we would garnish parsley on top of, say, spaghetti and meatballs or anything like that, if you have, like, some really good, I don't know, empanadas or, say, tacos, burritos, anything like that where it's just kind of like tortilla and the meat and the spices and everything else, fresh cilantro goes a long way on top of that. It's such a unique flavor, it's really delicious, and I really definitely recommend you get some, whether for your garden this summer, right, growing some cilantro, or just keeping it on hand, it is very nice. But now this is where we get also into the fun of the magic. And now this is a very Mars fire kind of uh, plant here. And that's why it's so apt for Aries season. Aries also being a fire sign ruled by Mars. And as I was saying before, right, throughout Europe, people thought that it was kind of an aphrodisiac. And so not only is it Mars fire, which kind of already gives you an idea of what its energy is, but specifically, Coriander, cilantro, they're really good when it comes to uh, sparking passion, when it comes to uh, inflaming, like, say, lust and love and all these other kinds of things. In fact, some say that, thought to be an aphrodisiac, coriander was added to love potions during the medieval and renaissance periods. Robert Turner would appear to agree with this assessment and said that when consumed with wine, coriander stimulates the animal passions. Okay, so this is kind of like a date night herb if you think about it, especially if you're using it in something like spiced wine. That's a great way to enchant a delicious bottle of wine. 
But of course, it's also used for other things. Divination, spirit connection, uh, just general spiritual power, mental clarity, uh, passion, creativity, drive, especially. Think of Aries. Aries is that competitive driving force, right? And so coriander is going to really help with that kind of force as well. But overall, it is really a delicious herb, wonderful herb, something that I really enjoy putting into my curries, into my soups, into all these other kinds of things, because it just has such a special kick to it and it's got such a storied history as well humans have always been using this therefore i really suggest you guys check this out get it stocked maybe plant it in your garden and overall just have a great time with it so i hope that was helpful and i'll see you guys next time for some more kitchen witch tips see ya